welcome all to the next lecture on automata theory and computability module 1 so let's take a quick recap on what was done in the previous session so we were already introduced into automata theory we have seen the applications of finite automata as well as a few uh, basic notations uh, that we have to remember throughout the session is uh, the terminologies are uh, alphabets and uh, strings, languages, empty set, null string and grammar. So these terminologies are already defined in the previous session. So in today's session, we'll be covering in topics like finding the language using certain conditions. We'll see what is in finite automata definition. Uh, followed by, we'll see what is a decision problem, types of finite automata, the definition of DFA and we'll also see how a DFA works and the construction of DFA. So let's begin with the uh, first diagram that I have here. This is all about modeling languages and the language acceptor. This gives a complete view on what the syllabus actually covers in. So here we have some of the language generators like we'll be introduced into what is regular language and the machine that is used to, for accepting these languages we have a language acceptor which is called as the finite automata. So this is a finite state machine that, would be, uh, that we'll be designing. So they are broadly classified into two types. We have the DFA and the NFA. So DFA stands for deterministic finite automata. And NFA stands for non-deterministic finite automata. So, uh, so most of the topics that that we cover in the first module is on the on designing and finite automata, and the second module co covers the regular language and grammar. The third module is all about the context-free grammar (PDA). And then the fourth module is about the Turing machine and the recursive language. So uh, the next language generator that we have is the context-free language. And the language acceptor that we'll be designing is a PDA. PDA stands for pushdown automata. So again, they are broadly classified into two types, deterministic PDA and non-deterministic PDA. And lastly, we'll be seeing what is a recursive language. And we have a very powerful a uh, language acceptor that we'll be using here and that is called the Turing machine which was invented by Alan Turing in way back in 1940. So this gives a glimpse on our uh, syllabus and what we'll be studying in, uh, in the next upcoming modules. Now uh, before we can start with the uh, DFA and the construction of DFA, we need a few prerequisites that we need to understand so that we'll be able, uh, so that it'll be easy to solve in the problems. So the first one is how do we find a language using a certain conditions? So given a condition, we have to determine what are the strings that can be in, uh, that can be present uh, in the language. So now uh, let's see the examples here. So I've taken one of the example. It states that find a language L with zeros and ones containing odd number of ones. So this is a condition that's given a year. So first is, as soon as the question is given, or when you see the question, first analyze what are the alphabets that is used in the, uh, used in the question. So in this case, we have the, uh, uh, we have the sigma notation that we use to represent a, la uh, a alphabet. So in this case, you can see that we are making use of two alphabets. One is 0 and the other one is 1. So these determine the set of alphabets that we are using or the set of symbols that we are using here. And the next thing, we have to determine what are the set of words that is present in the language. So what are the different kinds of strings that can be generated using the condition. So the strings that we will be obtaining is based on the condition that is given here that they should be odd number of ones. Odd number of ones in sense they can be one occurrence of one, three occurrence of one, five occurrence of one and so on. So in this case what all could be in the string. So I can have a one so which is the odd, uh, odd occurrence of one. So similarly, I can have 0, 1 because there is no constraint that is given on the alphabet 0. So uh, you need not worry on where the 1 should appear. So 0, 1 is again a valid string. We can have 1, 0 which is again a valid string. In both the cases, we have one occurrence of 1. So which is an odd number. Then we can have 
three ones, which is an again an even, uh, again, uh, sorry, again an odd number. And then we can have zero, one, one, one. And then we can have, so one, 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 zero, and so, so on. Okay, so we can go on construct, uh, we can have a finite set of strings in this way. So similarly, so what would be the language that we can write for this? The language can be defined as L, L equal to all the strings that is present in the language must uh, contains an uh, odd number of ones. So this is how we represent the language. Now coming to the next example. So the next example is find a language L with zeros and ones with, uh, with even number of ones. So the constraint here is that they should be even number of ones. So in the previous case, even we can have strings that has two zeros followed by a single one or we can have two zeros followed by three ones. This is all valid here as we don't have any constraint on zeros. So in, in, in the second case, in the next example, uh, uh, the question is given as find a language L with zeros and ones that consists of even number of ones. So even number of ones include the even occurrence of ones. So it can be zero occurrence of ones, two occurrence of, uh, uh, two occurrence of ones, four occurrence of ones and so on. And there is no constraint on zero. So uh, find out what is the alphabet that we can identify from this question. So here the alphabet is given as zero comma one. So this is the alphabet that we'll be using. And what are the set of strings that can be generated using this alphabets are? So we can have epsilon because zero occurrence of one is also a valid string. So epsilon, uh, epsilon gives a null string here. And then we can have two ones, so which gives an even constraint of ones. And then we can have zero, one, one, which is again a even, uh, which has even number of ones. We can have one, zero, one. Again, uh, this string has even number of ones. And again, we can have one, one, zero, which is again an even number of ones. And then we can have one, zero, zero, one, which has an even number of ones. Zero, zero, one. 1 has an even number of 1s, 1, 1, 0, 0 has an even number of 1s and so on we can generate a finite set. So the language here can be given as uh, all the strings in the language must consist of even number of 1s. So this is how we write in the language. Now coming to the next example, in the next example so the question states that find L with A's and uh, with A's and B's that consist of even number of A's and B's, which means that I, sh I should have we should have an even occurrence of A for, and as well as even occurrence of B's. So again, identify what are the alphabets that is present here. So the alphabets are A comma B. So this is the one that is present here, number of A's and B's. So this is the alphabet here. The second thing is I have to find out what are the valid strings that can be present in the set. So something like, so again, epsilon is valid because zero is again an even number. So I can write this. A, A is valid as I'm considering zero occurrence of B and even two occurrence of A. This is valid. So again, I can take B, B. When I'm taking zero occurrence of A and two occurrence of B, it's again a valid one. So I can take A for A, A followed by B, B, B. So this is again a valid string. And then A, B, B, A, which is again a valid string. I can have A, B, A, B, which is a valid string. And so on, I can generate a finite set of a uh, finite set of strings. So the language that we can write here is L is equal to all the strings that is present in the language must consist of even number of A's 
an even number of Bs. So only thing that we have to remember here is, so whenever I'm writing a string, I need to be very, we need to be very careful because this is the gist for us to solve in the problems on finite automata. So uh, coming to the next one is find the language, uh, find a language L with A's and B's having a substring A. So the condition that is given here is substring A. Now uh, again, so you can find out the alphabets. Alphabets given is A comma B are the alphabets. And then we'll find out the strings that can be generated using this alphabets. So the condition is that there should be a substring AA. So the minimum constraint or the minimum string itself is AA. So AA is what we can have. And then I can have B followed by AA. So because AA is a substring, so I can have BAA. AAB is again valid. And then I can have AB followed by AA. So this is again a valid string. So I can have B. A, A followed by B, which is a valid string. I can have A, A, three A's. Again, this is a valid string because this includes the substring A, A. So uh, similarly, I can take four occurrence of A also because this again has the substring A, A in it. So similarly, I can generate a finite set of strings here. So the language that I can write here is all the strings that is belonging to the language L must consist of a substring AA. So, uh, so this are, these are a few examples to understand how a language can be generated. Now coming to the, moving on to the next one. Now let's understand what is a finite automata. So generally a finite automata is defined as a state diagram that can capture all possible states and transitions that, uh, that a machine can take while responding to a stream, of, uh, stream or a sequence of input symbols. To just understand this particular definition, let's see this with an example. Let's uh, consider an example where I'm taking the design, uh, we will try to design the logic behind an electric bulb. So, uh, if I have to draw a state transition diagram for an electric bulb, you know that there are two states uh, if an electric bulb has to grow. So, initially, whenever the switch is in the off state, so you have two states, I'll write the states here. So, the first state that I have is the off state and the second state of the switch would be the on state. Now, whenever I wanted the electric bulb to glow, so what I do is, initially I start, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll just try to flip the switch such that the switch is, uh, switch is uh, on. So that, that's the transition. So initially it was in the off state. So I make a transition. So I perform an action here. And what is the action that is performed? I just flip the uh, switch so that it moves to the next state which is the on state. Now, once I'm in the on state, the bulb glows here, right? And then if I have to put the bulb off, so all that I need to do is, again, flip the switch so that it is turned off. So here, the action that I'm going to perform is flipping off the switch, okay? And what are the states that I have? The switch is either in the on, st on state or the off state. When the switch is in the off state, the, bul the bulb is off. And when the uh, switch is in the on state, the bulb glows. Okay, so this, this is a basic idea here. And how is this related to finite automata? So now I can make a, a statement that, so on even number of flips of the switches, the bulb glows. Or in other condition, I can write it as bulb glows on on odd flips, on odd flips of the switch. Okay, so how can I justify this uh, statement? So this statement can be justified like this. So initially the switch is off. On the first flip, the switch is on. And on the second flip, the switch is off again. And on the third flip, you can see that the switch is on. And the fourth flip, the switch is off. So again, on the fifth, on the fifth flip, the switch is on, and the sixth flip, the switch is off. So when you can see here, I can just I can say state that the bulb glows 
on odd number of flips only when i give odd number of flips uh, on on odd number of flips the bulb grows if not the bulb remains in the off state so this is uh, one of the example here so now moving on to the next one let's see the basic features of finite automata the very first feature of a finite automata is that so in the basic features of a finite automata we can uh, see that so a finite automata is a simple computer that has a limited memory the second feature of it is that it has a finite set of states and the third one is that the current state of a finite automata changes when it reads an input symbol and lastly it acts as a language acceptor uh, so the output is either yes or no that is it can either accept a string or reject a string so to have more clarity on this we can see all these features with an example so i'll move on to the next one so before starting with an finite automata let's see what is a decision problem so a decision problem is actually a computational problem with yes or no as the answer so the computer that solves the decision problem we generally term it as a decider and the input generally to the decider would be the input string if the input string is present in the language that is defined then the decider will accept the string if the uh, string is not present in the language then it rejects the string the similar working is what an uh, dfa does okay the dfa works as in or the finite or, uh, machine works as a decider so based on the input string that we provide in uh, provided to the machine it decides whether to accept the string or to reject the string so coming to the next one to just have a layman uh, example for this so i've taken a layman example so here we have a child this child can understand only english words okay so whenever english language is spoken to the child the child responds to it or is able to understand it for example so strings or words like milk food sleep can be uh, the child can understand these words and uh, respond respond to it now if we uh, similarly if we try to use any other language other than english the child will not be able to understand it it simply rejects it a similar thing is what uh, is the working of a dfa now coming to the next one so now let's see what are the uh, different types of finite automata so we are we have two types of finite automata the first one is called the dfa and the other one is called the nfa so nfa uh, dfa stands for deterministic finite automata and nfa stands for non deterministic finite automata now if you see what is in deterministic finite automata it states that there is uh, so, so only one path for a specific input from the current state to the next state existing so which means that if i take a state so let me draw a state here so if i take a state q not and i have a input string so let me assume that the input string that i'm taking is a so i can have only one transition for a specified input string to any state so that's what is mentioned here only one path for a specific input from the current state to the next state q0 being the current state and q1 being the next state so this is a condition in case of dfa we cannot have multiple transitions for the same input string here so in in and one more thing you cannot accept a null move here on accepting a null string it cannot make a transition to the next state so this is an important points that has to be Uh, remembered while we are uh, while we are uh, solving the problem in so in case of dfa so uh, uh, n n dfa so the difference is that so here we can have multiple path for a specific input so in that case what I, what i can do is for the same input i can have multiple transitions so this i can have a to n to then i can make one more transition Uh, on accepting a it can also move to q3 now this is an example for nfa okay so it's all dependent on how it uh, how, how how it makes the transition so in this case only one path for a specific input for uh, from the current state to the next state here it can have multiple path for a specific input now uh, in in today's session we'll be completely concentrating on the dfa 
Now let's, uh, so before we can construct the DFA, let's see the symbols that is used in finite machine and what are the various notation. So whenever you have a state, how a state can be represented is, a state can be represented using a circle. So I can draw a circle and I can write Q0. You can write any anything here, whatever you wanted to uh, name the state as. But general notations that we make use uh, in the uh, that is used in the textbooks are Q0, so we stick on to it. So this is how we represent a state. Now, a start state is represented similarly. So generally, a start state is represented with an inward arrow to the state. So this is the representation for the start state. Now, the notation that is used to determine a final state is a double circle. So a double circle, and I write Q0, this determines that the state is a final state. So this is how we determine a state. This indicates the start state where we just have an inward arrow to the state. And the double circle to the state, it determines that it is a final state. So coming to the next one, now what, how can I determine an empty set? So empty set is the same thing as the start state. So I can have Q0 with an inward arrow. This determines the empty set. Empty set is different from null string. So whenever I determine a null string, a null string is determined as the final state with an inward arrow. So this is how we, this is the notation to determine it. Null string. Now, I have a language here, a language that accepts A. Now, if I have to draw an DFA for this, I have to start with a start state. So, this is how the notation that I'm going to use for the start state. On accepting this input string A, so after it accepts an input, the current state Q0, after reading an input A, it makes a transition to the next state Q1. Now, when can I tell that the symbol A is accepted is only if this transition reaches a final state, I can tell that this string is accepted. It accepts the string. Now, here I have the next language here. So, you can see that the language accepts zero or more occurrence of A's. Now, how do I write a DFA for this is? So, I initially start with the start state. So, I write Q0 and now you can see that this is epsilon. So whenever there is a null string, you know that it is indicated with a double zero because the null string should be accepted. So this will accept the null string, the first one. Now I have to accept A followed by any number of A's. So what I can do is, all that I can do is, I can have a self loop to A. Okay, now in this case, you can see that since it remains in the final state itself, the string can get accepted. Now, we can see if suppose I have three A's. How is this string accepted? Now, let me write the transition. We'll see what is a transition later. Now, usually the symbol that is used to represent a transition is a, de is a delta. So, I've written uh, delta and the current state is Q0. Okay, I'm here in the state Q0. On reading an input A, the first symbol that is read is A. On reading an input A, where do I stay? I stay in the next state. I stay in the, I retain in the same state, which is Q0. Okay, now again, so delta, I still remain in the same state Q0 and then read another A and this, since I'm looping to the same state, it retains in Q0 itself. Again, I retain in Q0, read the third A, so I read the third character, the third alphabet A, and I still rem remain in Q0. Now check if Q0, after reading the third input, if I reach the final state, then it's understood that the string is accepted successfully. Okay, these are the few basic notations that we need to remember before we can solve the problems on DFA. Now let's see the formal definition of DFA. The formal definition of a DFA is defined as M equal to, so M here stands for a machine because it's a finite state machine that we are trying to design. So M equal to, you have Q here, Q defines a non-empty set of states. 
So what are the states that we are going to use in our DFA? That would be uh, determined using Q. And then you have the sigma here. So this determines the, the, uh, the finite set of alphabets here. And then you have the delta here. This delta is actually a transition function that tells uh, what, uh, what is the transition that is made if I have to on reading an input. If I want to move from one state to another state on reading an input, what transition would happen? So that is, uh, that is determined using a delta. And then you have two other states. You have Q0 here. Q0 signifies the start state. So this is the start state. And then you have F here. F signifies the final state. So these are the five uh, tuples that, we'll be, uh, that we have to remember whenever we try to define uh, define a DFA. Now to just see more into detail on how to represent a transition which I've already done in the previous slide. So let me move to the next one. So generally, so if you see this transition, so what this transition states that a transition is made from, so Q0 is the current state, I'll write it as CS. One here is the input symbol. So I can write it as an input symbol. And Q1 is the next state. So how do I write a DFA based on the transition? Q1, Q0 is the start state. So because that is the current state here, so I'm starting with Q0. On, a, on reading an input 1, it reads an input 1. What's the next state that it reaches? Q1. So this may or may not be the final uh, uh, state, but in this case, I'll consider this as the final state. So this is how I represent. So it, it's the other way of writing. Generally, when we write the DFA, we come we can come out with the transition, uh, the transition states also. So anyways is fine here. So coming to the next one, you can see that Q0 is the current state. So I'll write it like this. Q0 is the start state. And then you can see that on reading a 0, it remains in the same state. Now again, it can either be uh, the final state or it can retain the same. So the next one here, if you see here, I have two states here. So in this case, you can see that I'll start with Q0 because this is my current state indication. I start with Q0. On reading a 0, on reading a zero input, it makes a transition to the next state, which is Q1. So I'll make this as a final state. There is one more transition here. On uh, the current state is Q0. On seeing a one, it can uh, it has to make a transition to Q1. So generally, we will write it this way. So there is an alternative here. We can also write it as. So this can be written as comma 1. Okay. So Q0 on seeing either a 0 or 1 makes a transition. Okay. I'm sorry. Q0 on seeing either a 0 or a 1 makes a transition to Q0. This is, uh, so the other question that I have here is a DFA to accept 1 or uh, 1A or 1B. Uh, so the, uh, the DFA design for this problem is the one that is stated above here. So I'll come to the next one. Now we'll see how exactly a DFA works. Now you know what the pr uh, problem does. Uh, so here the DFA, uh, so once a, a DFA is constructed, all that a DFA has to do is it has to check whether a string that is present in the language is accepted or rejected. Now how do I do that? So what I do is here a DFA is already given and a string is already given. Now let's see whether the string is accepted. So I'll start with Q0. Q0, I'm here in the state, the current state, on reading the first input B. So this is the first input that it reads. On reading the input B, it makes a transition to Q1. Q1 is here. Okay. And then now it stays in the next state Q1. Now this is going to act as the current state. And you read the next input, which is again a B. Now we can see that there is this loop here. So 
when after reading B, you can see that it still remains in the same state Q1. So now the current state that I'm going to stay here is Q1 and read the next input string which is A. Now once we read an input string A, you can see that a transition is made to Q2. So this is the, uh, the, the third state that we have. Now staying in third state, now this becomes the current state. It reads the next input which is B. Now see on reading B, it makes a transition to Q1. Now see if Q1 is in the final state. If Q1 is in the final state, which means that the string is successfully accepted. Now you can see the same thing is, is written here. The last statement tells that it accepts because the, DS, uh, the DFA is in, a, in an accept state Q1 at the end of the input. So once it reads B, you can see that it reaches the end state. Now let's see the next condition. So the next condition is to check for a reject case. Now, does the DFA accept the string AABA? So, a DFA design is already given. Now, let's see if the string is accepted or rejected. Okay. So, again, we start from the start state, Q0, on reading the first input, which is A. So, you can see that after reading A, it remains in the same state, which is Q0. We remain in the same state. Now, standing at Q0, What's the next input that has to be read? It is A again. Okay. Now on reading the A, it loops back again to the same state and it retains in Q0. Now we are still in Q0 and we are reading the next symbol which is B. On reading the symbol B, we make a transition to the next state which is Q1 here. So I reach Q1. Now I am here in Q1. And then the next input that we'll be seeing or read is A. So on reading A, I reach a state Q0. Now you can see that Q0, Q2 is not the final state here. So uh, we can clearly identify that the string here is rejected. Okay, so that's what is given here. Reject because the DFA is in the reject state Q2 at the end of the input. So always whenever we are checking for the acceptability of a string, ensure at the end of, uh, after it reads the last alphabet, it should, it, uh, it, it should be in the final state. Only then the string is accepted. If not, the string is rejected. Now with all these basics in, we will see a few examples. Okay, now let's see the construction of a DFA. Now this is a very important problem. The first thing is, as uh, once a question is given, uh, I'll just read out the question here. Construct a DFA to accept strings of A's and B's having a substring AA. Now, this is a condition that's given here. Just for the sake of simplicity, I've already written the string here. So, the string will not be given for you all in the exams. On seeing the question, the string has to be generated. So, you can see that I have the substring AA. Then I have three A's. This is also a valid one. If I have four A's, this is also a valid one because it contains the substring A. Similarly, if I have any number of A's, that should be accepted uh, as it has um, the substring A. I mean to tell that if I have five A's, this still this should be accepted and so on. The other string that I have is BAA. So that's again, there is a substring AA, it's accepted. AAB is accepted because there is a substring there, AA. And then you can see this uh, string here, AABB, this is also accepted. ABAA is also accepted because you have a string. If I have something like this, BAAB, this should also be accepted as it has a substring AA. So and so on, you can have a finite set. Now coming to the, uh, how do I construct in DFA for this? Now always the technique here is, uh, first thing is that you have to find out which is the minimum string here and try to draw the skeleton of DFA based on the minimum string. Now the minimum string here is AA. So construct the skeleton of DFA based on the minimum string. So what I do is, now I have to draw a DFA to accept AA. So I'll start with the start state Q0. Okay, so I'm here in the state Q0. On seeing a A, on reading an A, 
I make a transition to the next state which is Q1. Now I am in the state Q1. I see the next input which is A again. Which is A again. I make a transition to Q2. And since this is the minimum string that has to be accepted by the DFA, I make this as the final state. Now this becomes the skeleton of the DFA. Now start building on the skeleton. Now what I do is, so there are few hint, uh, there are few notes that you need to remember whenever you're solving this problem. The first thing is for every input symbol when, uh, from a current state, if I read a particular input symbol, there should be only one transition to the next state. So I cannot have one more transition from Q0 uh, on reading an A to any other state. So that is not allowed here. There should be only one transition. And then again, one. Uh, so if I'm in Q0, I should see whether both the strings are in. So in this case, if you see here, what is the alphabet that it accepts? The alphabet that it accepts is A and B. I should ensure that Q0 makes a transition on seeing a A as well as it has a transition on seeing a B. Similarly, Q1 also must have a transition for A. It must also have a transition for B. Again, Q2 must also have a transition for A and a transition for B. Now, let's see how to do this. I'll just write the uh, transition function here. So I'll start, I've started with Q0. On reading the A, you can see that we have moved to Q1. Now again, what is left out? On uh, starting with Q0, I have on reading a B, I should see what is the move. Now the next one. On Now let me assume that I have read A and then I've come to Q1. So I'm in the state Q1. On seeing a Seeing the A, you can see that we have made a transition to Q2. Now again, delta Q1. On reading a B, I have not found the transition yet. So I have to find out. Now the third one that I have is, so Q2 on reading a A, we'll see what is the transition. And Q2 on reading a B, we'll see what is the transition. You can either construct the DFA completely and write out the transition or you can write it simultaneously uh, so that it becomes easy. Now you can see that just bother about the transitions, uh, just the inputs for which the transition is not made. So I, I need to worry about this. So I start I, staying in Q0, what happens if I read a B? So what happens if I have B as the first symbol? So B followed by AA should be accepted. So similarly, BB followed by AA should also be accepted. BB and any number of B followed by A should also be accepted because all these conditions have the substring AA. So how do I write the transition? So one way of writing the transition is you can have a loop here. Okay, so why not a transition is made from Q0 to Q1? If I make a transition of uh, on reading B from Q0 to Q1, you can see that it will accept the string BA, which is actually not a valid one. So this will accept all the strings that is given here. B, you can see here, B, A, A is accepted. It can read uh, one or more number of Bs followed by A, A, it is accepted. Now see, for Q0, I made a transition on reading an input A as well as B. Now go to the next one. Okay, so come to Q1. So when do I reach Q1? Basically on seeing a B, uh, seeing a A, I reach Q1. Or seeing one or more occurrence of B and a, a, I reach Q1. Now standing in Q1, so I need not bother about A because already the transition is made for it. Now see what happens if I see a, a B here. I make a transition to B. So A, after seeing a A, I come to the state Q1 or B, A, I come to the state Q1, right? So what happens if I see a B? Now, if I see a B here, now you can see that A, B, I should ensure that there is a substring here, okay? So uh, in, in this case, so, I, so what, what can we do is we can have a transition to Q0 here. So this becomes B here. So what I've done here is, so you can see Q0 on reading a A, I reach Q1 and then on reading a B, I reach Q0 again. 
On reading the A and the A, I reach Q2. So I can reach the final state Q2. Okay. So this is a condition. Now let's see for this condition. If I've read a B, a A, a B, A, A, I reach the final state. So any combinations of this is being uh, accepted with this transition move. Now come to Q2. So in Q2 again, let me see what is the transition. What happens on reading a A? Now you can see that when do I reach Q2? After accepting a A, I come to Q1. After accepting the second A, I come to Q2. A, A, I reach Q2. Now what happens on seeing a third A? This should be accepted as this, con this string contains a substring. Similarly, if I have four A's, it should still be accepted because it's got the substring A A. If I have five A's, it should be accepted. So any number of A's here, it should be accepted. So what I do is, I'll write a loop here and remain in the final state because it is in the accept state. Okay. Now what happens on seeing a B? Okay. So on seeing a B, now let's see. So again, after seeing A and A, I have reached Q2. Now what happens if I see a B? So already there is a substring AA. So whether I have one B or any number of Bs here, this string should be accepted. So I can write comma B here. Okay. Now let's fill down the transitions here. Q0 on seeing a B, Q0 on seeing a B, we retain in the same state, which is Q0. And then Q1 on reading a B, we move to Q0. And then Q2 on reading a A, we stay in Q2. Q2 on reading a B, we stay in Q2. Now, how do I check if my, uh, if my design is correct is just take a random string uh, that's present in the language and check if that string is accepted by the language. You can just traverse from Q0 and then check if it is accepted. If the string is accepted, then the design that you have done is correct. If not, uh, the string can be rejected. So with this problem, we'll wind up with this session for today. And then I uh, will meet you again in the next session of Automata uh, Theory and Computability. Thank you.